Okay, so remember that all enzymes are made out of protein, so this, some of the same factors that can mess up a protein's three-dimensional shape are going to be some of the same factors that are going to f affect enzyme activity because they're going to change the 3D shape of the enzyme. And remember that enzymes are proteins, so they're mostly held together with uh, things like you know, hydrogen bonds, um, polar nonpolar interactions, you know, so let's do P and MP for polar and nonpolar interactions, um, you know, ionic interactions, positive and negatives, and then there's, you know, acid and base interactions that are going on here. So anything that really um, plays with these sorts of factors can possibly end up changing the ability and the speed that which an enzyme goes through its reactions. First one we'll look at the first one we'll look at here is, is temperature and you can see that uh, you know this might be different for different enzymes but it'll be the same for a lot of enzymes. They're all going to sort of peak around you know sort of the, the mid 30s. Now in theory you would probably expect that this this graph would just take off because um, the way we tend to think of chemical reactions happening is collision theory where the more energy the particles have the faster they collide therefore the more reactions you have so as those particles collide you should end up having more chemical reactions so we would expect and predict that our ends up the, the rate of reaction would take off as we got warmer but the reason we see this big drop at the end is because we've changed the shape of the enzyme because we've ended up breaking disulfide bridges, hydrogen bonds, and these sorts of things in these enzymes. Most enzymes are going to have so what we call an optimum temperature, so in other words, a peak in activity at around the mid to late 30 degrees Celsius range. This is why most organisms want to get their body temperatures as warm as possible because for a lot of them, that's going to translate into energy production, which will translate into power, the ability in, in energy, the ability to do work. Now with pH, most of the time we're going to want to have, uh, you know, our pH in our in our body systems with homeostasis somewhere in the the range of seven, a little bit before, a little bit after. It's going to be dependent on where that enzyme is acting in the body. But there are some enzymes that work at very low pHs, and pepsin is one of those that breaks apart uh, proteins in your stomach. But basically, again, we're talking about hydrogen bonds here. And, and altering or, or denaturing an enzyme. And once we do that, we change the shape of the active sites on the enzymes, and then the substrates can't get in there and the enzyme doesn't work anymore. So again, with temperature and pH, this is why organisms have to maintain homeostasis and keep life in that Goldilocks zone, because they want to keep the enzyme activity running at optimum and or optimal levels. Now there's two other factors that are going to affect the rate of enzyme activity, but before we do that, let's just go back and really quickly remember what's going on with enzymes. We've got our substrates floating around in, in, in the cytoplasm or outside the cells and they're going to fit in the active sites of these of this enzyme and then the enzyme is going to change shape which will bring these two molecules closer together or pull them further apart depending on whether we're building or breaking an anabolic a building or catabolic or breaking type reaction. And I think you can appreciate that if we've got an enzyme where it's all filled with substrates in the active sites the more substrate we add, our enzyme activity is going to look a little different because at some point you're going to reach a, a critical level where all the active sites and all the enzymes, even though we've just shown one here, are going to be occupied. And at that point our reaction is going to sort of slow down and won't be able to work any faster. So that's why we see if we increase the concentration of substrates, our reaction curve, our graph is going to look something like this, where it sort of plateaus as you go up. So it increases as you would expect as you add reactants or substrates. But eventually it starts to slow because we talk about our enzyme being saturated with substrates. We can't fit any more substrates in the active sites. They're all being used. And I think it's, it's sort of like a production line where you've got things coming down on a conveyor belt and you can only work so fast. And the more that come, the, the less productive you get at some point. Now, of course, all this changes if you add enzymes. If you Even if you increase the substrate, if you're adding enzymes, you're adding active sites. Your reaction can go faster and faster. And at some point, yes, your rate of reaction will be limited to the amount of enzymes, but if you've got a, an unlimited amount of substrates, 
and you just keep adding enzymes, your rate of reaction is just going to take off. So those are the major types of things we see affecting enzyme activities. Now there are others, such as what we call conjugated proteins, where we need coenzymes. And this is a co example of a coenzyme here. We'll, we'll see them a lot in the course where the, they're sort of helper enzymes or other pieces. They don't actually do the work, but um, they, they participate heavily in the reactions. They're kind of like somebody who helps an old person across the street. Um, you know, you need them there to make that process happen, even though they're not a major player. And the other thing we'll see is cofactors. Now, these are oftentimes... Um, Vitamins, they can be non-metal ions that have to fit and oftentimes to change the shape of the active site. And you can see sort of we need a cofactor here to get in between these two active sites to help bring the two substrates together. So there's a lot of differences between cofactors and coenzymes. A lot of coenzymes can be non-metal ions like sodium and iron and these sorts of things. And cofactors tend to be more vitamins. Uh, there is a, a little bit of a difference between those two, and there's a, there's a bit of mix and matching that happens. But those things are sort of like helpers and, and extra things that can go on with enzymes.